listening to KX93.5, Laguna's Only FM. I'm Scott Hayes. This is Radio Caravan. I'm here with my co-host, of course, uh, Jim Bastian, who's doing something over there with his telephone, which we hate, of course, and Jill Harvey, Jim. who's here. Jim? Jim. I, I had a text uh, uh, from a... The ambassador was texting me back. Oh, I'm no trying kidding. to lay the sure. groundwork for maybe a potential guest. I name. apologize. So I apologize. I'm working All right. for the show. <laughs> Sounds like BS to me. Yeah. All right. The ambassador from Argentina? That's right. Do you, know, do you know that my boss has just become the ambassador to Hungary, Colleen Bell. Right. I, it was funny because... Uh, was she there? Well, she wasn't. They, they, You know the story. Then they went through at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Lots yeah. of controversy Let me, let me just tell point. our listeners. So, oh. Shall we tell them who you are? Oh, well, you can tell them. Why don't yeah. you tell them? No, no, no. You tell no, them. No, you tell this them. This is your show. Do it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have in the room, we have Jeff Trakta, who was Thorn on the soap opera Bold and the Beautiful for eight years. And Colleen Bell... Okay. Was the producer of that show, and she was just made the ambassador to Hungary. Isn't that wow, amazing? Wow, that is right. amazing. And so, so how did you so, know all this? Well, because my buddy Noah and Colleen were sort of pilloried in the press about their lack of qualifications and how it was sort of a Hollywood, West Coast, you know, they were big supporters of Obama and donated a bunch of money or bundled and, and raised a bunch of money. So John Stewart was just railing on my buddy and Colleen. Yes, but they are, let me tell you something about Colleen Bell. Yeah. You've been a producer for The Bold and the Beautiful for 15 years. You have dealt with domestic violence. You have dealt with every <laughs> issue out there. And she really, uh, I think, I think some, it was McCain who was really coming down hard right. on her. Oh. And, uh, and someone said that, well, at least Colleen Bell is not angry and she can make friends. And she really is. She's a wonderful person. Yeah. So it's really nice. cool. What was your storyline on Bold and the Beautiful? Oh, I mean, who, you, who were you? I what? played this guy named Thorn Forrester. And uh, he was married to Macy, and I married her five times, actually. Wow. On the show, in, five yeah, times? Yeah, five times in eight years. <laughs> and it only took, like, a couple of times I got thrown into jail. I, I had a wonderful time. Actually, Bold and Beautiful was my third soap opera. My first job when I was 22 was a show called One Life to Live. Oh, I wow. played a guy named Boyce McDonald. Boyce? Uh, Boyce. Uh -huh. And then I was on a show called Loving, where I played a character named Hunter Belden. Great names. Mm -hmm. You're getting a They're like this. poor names. I, I went from I said no. I went from Boyce. Did I just say that? Oh, Sorry. No. Wow. I went from Boyce to Hunter to Thorn, and I told my agent, I'm gonna put it in my next contract that my name will be Al. Yeah, it's just a normal name. <laughs> but they don't have Al's on soap opera. Oh yeah, I bet no. not, yeah. So. Hey, so you know, you were voted uh, let me see if I got this right. You were voted Entertainer of the Year by Southern California Theater Review. Uh, you've opened for Liza Minnelli in Las Vegas, is that true? Yeah, at the Hilton. Yeah, and so I, I, how would you describe your act? I mean, you, we've got listeners right now. We have viewers on the cable show. Yes. They know nothing about your act yet. Mm-hmm. How do we kind of open that dialogue? I'm sort of the vaudevillian of the new millennium. I do everything in my act. I do. I sing, I dance, I do impressions, and um, make people happy. That's the whole goal. I like that, and yeah. And so... Um, I've been very fortunate, though. I have to give it up because the man who brought me here to, to your radio show, his name is John McEntee. Right. And he, uh, he's the guy who's responsible for bringing Terry Fader. Do you know who Terry Fader is? Yeah. He's the great ventriloquist, ventriloquist. Right. Yeah, at him. the Mirage. John brought him to the Mirage and really recreated ventriloquism with this guy. And he took me, an impressionist, and he. this is more than just an impress, impressionistic show. Right. I do... Um, it's multimedia. There are all these screens behind me. Right. And as I'm on stage doing all of these characters, I transform myself onto the, the screen, screen behind there. you. Yeah, as all the different people. So it becomes very interactive with the audience. And, um, very and, and, you know, I've gone online and I've researched it and I've edited it and I watched some of the YouTubes. And, you know, when John came to our attention through Jill, Jill, it was your... It was yeah. your that, you know, I said, I looked at all his clients. I told you this on the phone the other day. I looked at all his clients, and the one person I sort of found myself, I mean, look, he's got a lot of great clients, don't get me wrong, but I was fascinated by what you do on that stage because you really perform these great impersonations of these famous singers, and then you transform yourself into the multimedia screen behind you into these same singers, right? Exactly. So the Black Eyed Peas, for example, you're in the background on the big screen playing everybody. Even Fergie. Even Fergie. And I was going to ask you about And I didn't think I had the legs for it. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what does it feel but like? But Photoshop is amazing what they can do, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
What does it feel like to dress as Fergie, by the way? Well, do you, I was actually do you it was, channel her. When well, you're... I do. I do female voices. I do basically every different. And it's so interesting because you're all like, "Well, come on, do something for us. Let me mm-hmm. hear some of your." I started out as a little child. I mastered, I think, every cartoon voice that was out there, starting with, mm-hmm. "Are you a monkey? Hey, Rocky, watch me pull this rabbit out of a hat." It's the professor and Rock Bottom. Hey, boo boo. Gosh, Snoop, let's blow this coop, Snoop. Tennessee tuxedo never fails. You've been watching the McGilla Gorilla Show. Mush mouse, let it in your ear. Oh, pooky poo. Come on, pussy cat, you can't make me. Exit, stage left even. I'm the pie, the skip, the skip, the pop, the pop, the pop, Whoa! Oh. That's awesome. And I, I know what you're thinking. What? His poor parents. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the interesting thing is my mom suffered from depression. Oh. Because I did these voices. No, because <laughs> my mom suffered from depression and I think I think because and she was addicted to the soap operas. Oh she was? Oh my god. Yeah. Days of our lives. I used to say my mom lived her she um um April. April. We were talking about it. She watches Days of Our Lives. My mom lived her life vicariously through the most important people in her life, the Horton family. (laughs) So I was raised by that. And so I think me becoming a performer, particularly a soap opera actor, was an attempt on my part to make a very depressed person Happy. Did you wow. gravitate and toward those voices to entertain your mom? Oh, yeah. And depressed? I could do every neighbor, and I could do every relative, yeah. and I could do every teacher that I went to. I, Did yeah. she respond? Oh, yeah. She, yep. Oh, she would laugh and laugh and laugh. And uh, that, I think, was part of, you know, my whole... Yeah. Process. Well, that's interesting, the way you came to that. You, did you ever go through bouts of depression yourself? Oh, well, when I was, I, when I was on Loving the soap opera, which was on ABC, one day they called me into the producer's office and they said, we have good news and bad news. That's never good. And I said, oh, what's what's the good news? The good news, you have made Hunter Belden the most evil, heinous character we have ever had on our show. (laughs) The bad news is that on July 6th, he will be shot. And I said, shot dead? Because you know. (laughs) You never know. Because you can be shot and a week later you're in the shower. And actually... And actually, they killed my character, and uh, I remember I told Joe Stewart, the producer, I said, Joe, I want to thank you for an incredible experience, and I honestly believe when God closes one door, a new door will open, and as I later told my friends, I walked out of the door of his office and straight into psychotherapy. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah? Yeah. Because I felt, you were so depressed? I felt it. The- no, it wasn't being killed on the soap opera. That was the trigger that allowed an existing depression that was already there. I grew up in an alcoholic household, right. two alcoholics, violence. So uh, that all you know, goes into itself. it. Yeah. yeah. And fortunately, I got with a great, great therapist, but I really paid the price. As a, as a 24-year-old, I spent six months not getting out of a bed. Really? Yeah. It wow. was, it that was, was devastating. Then. Devastating. Yeah. But, and they put me on every drug known to man at that point. Helpful, the drugs or not? No, actually, they just made my depression get worse because I had all of the side effects from right. all of the drugs. And right. I believe in drug therapy. Don't get me wrong. I really think a yeah. lot of people are helped by it. But for me, in my situation, it didn't help at all. Got you. So, but talk therapy, that Absolutely. is what saved my life. Talk to me about what is talk therapy. I mean, this is an interesting I had I had a wonderful uh, man named Dr. Glenn Bowles who basically said there are real reasons why a kid like you would be this suicidally depressed and if we get to the bottom we can you know clean out he used to say it's like cleaning up a sewer you've got to get down in there and you got to rip out all of the dirt and uh and he said you will you will experience joy and i have to say i'm 54 now and I have never been happier in Good my view. life. Yeah. And I've had, and it's not based on externals. It's based on the internal monologue that I live with every moment. And I enjoy life now. Good. And I didn't think you could have this much fun. That sounds great. Sounds yeah. cool. and it looks like you're having fun on stage. Oh, too. my God. I have more fun. Than, and so, yeah, getting back to the show. So <laughs> <laughs> I got a little heavy there. Too no, no, quick, no, 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 no. We talked about maybe that. Therapy. Was, yeah. Well, this is the thing. I, when I was, uh, my dad sold TV sets for a living at the Staten Island Mall in Sears. And we didn't have a lot of money. 
when I was growing up, mm -hmm. but you can bet we had the biggest television on the block, <laughs> and I spent my entire childhood glued to it. Yeah, Gloria, Archie and I is real glad to be on 93.5. Archie's oh, there, it you. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody may recognize uh, those particular voices. Yeah, Being but in your you generation. do. Yeah. I do. Oh, and Jim? the Jeff, thing is... Do you sing the, the theme? In boy, the way Glenn Miller played. Songs song. that made the hit parade. <laughs> Guys like us, we had that it made. <laughs> those were the days. <laughs> and those were the days, because I grew up watching t everything that's on TV land. So, and I and in my act, I do this thing. I was like, can you imagine what the stars that we grew up watching, if they were on television today, the topics that they would discuss. Yeah. For example, oh. Gilligan's Island. Gilligan, my boy, get me off of this godforsaken island. Mrs. Howell is feeling a bit frisky, and I'm having trouble raising the old minnow. I need some Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> or Mr. Haney from Green Acres. Mr. Douglas Welcome to the Hooterville Starbucks <laughs> for only $16.17. I will sell you this here triple venti non-fat soy pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Haney, it's a cup of coffee, but you're getting free Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, you remember Bewitched? Sure. Yes. Samantha. <laughs> now, this is an interesting thing. When I was a kid, Holy. we had gay characters yeah. on television, but they weren't out. Do right. you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. They yeah. were. They just didn't know it. Yeah, but <laughs> could you imagine if they had been? Right. For example, Uncle Arthur from... Samantha, I want you to meet my significant other, <laughs> Clay Aiken. <laughs> You know, it's funny. It's funny to even watch your facial expressions as you're going through those impressions. Are those necessary in order to do the voice? Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, because it's sort of it's a. I don't. I don't. I don't. People ask me how I do it, and I have to be honest with you. I don't know. Yeah, it just is there, and I could do it when I was a little kid. Like my, I, when I was a toddler, I could do an impression of, you know, my baby brother John. I could do a baby, and I was like four, and I was running around the house, or the family, uh, the family dog, uh, Duchess, <laughs> long-haired Chihuahua. <laughs> Have you ever used this to play pranks on people, like call them? Oh yeah, yeah actually, I got tickets once to see um, Charles Nelson Riley in a show. In Hollywood, he, do you remember Charles Nelson? Oh, sure. No, because, and I will tell you why. <laughs> Let's get one thing straight. I'm not. <laughs> no, but I called the theater, and I think it was like the Doolittle Theater, and I pretended that I was Charles. I said, yes, this is Charles Riley. I want you to leave two house seats for a man named Jeff Tractor. <laughs> The guy, oh, absolutely, Mr. Riley, I'll do it. Wow. And I got tickets. Nice. That's amazing. Yeah. What's it takes to be a great impersonator? What does it take? Mental illness focus. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, mental illness focus. Yeah. So, and, I, and I love, you know, I was doing the cartoons for you before, but I love the cartoons today. And actually, the opening of Family Guy, you know what that's a takeoff from? All in the Family, when she's sitting at the piano. Oh. But where are those good old fish in values? What the deuce do you think you're doing? Back off, fat man. <laughs> giggity, 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 go. Hi, Chris. Come on, Jesse. Let's go make some poops and bees. <laughs> Jeff, oh, like, my God. Remember that, show, remember that show Dream On? Uh, it was on HBO. It was about the guy who was so entranced with television in oh. the 50s and 60s. His whole, he would fade in and out of TV episodes in his real life. Oh wow! And you're sitting Sounds here like my life. It does, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, ran on HBO from in the in the nineties. Wow! Yeah, it was a, good, a great show. Yeah, so um, I watching those cartoons, I think triggered something inside, and it, the voice has to be interesting. Yeah, if the vo and you have to be able to get the essence of the voice. Right. For example, Ray Romano. The essence of Ray Romano is yay. Yeah. So if you can go, yay, look at this, I've learned a lot being a parent. 
I've learned I don't like children. <laughs> Or Joan Rivers, who had one of the great voices, oh. and don't we miss Joan Rivers? Yes. We do. Yeah. Her essence was this. Ah! That's true. If you can do, ah, can we show up? My God, I live to be 82 years old. And let me tell you something. My daughter, Melissa, kept saying, Mom, make a bucket list. Make a bucket list. So I made the stupid bucket list. Then I changed the B to an F. And I <laughs> 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 Love it. Love We're on radio. I didn't know where that was going. <laughs> we handle everything from general corporate formation, partnership, real estate. We have a full service litigation practice. And we also have a group of lawyers that handle bankruptcy and general insolvency matters. We offer big firm experience with a small firm feel. The person that you're hiring is the person who's going to be representing you throughout your entire map. The slogan of redefining full service attempts to capture two things. One, an explanation of the breadth or the diversity of the legal services that we provide, but also to recognize that our service to our community does not end with our legal services. Whether it's a pro bono opportunity where we're representing people for free, or whether we're actually volunteering on a project like Habitat for Humanity, for example. It includes the philanthropic efforts, the volunteering of time, and the donating of resources outside just the four corners of this law office. Hey, you're listening <laughs> to KX93.5 Laguna's Only FM. This is Radio Caravan. I'm Scott Hayes, here with my co-host, Jim Bastian and Jill Harvey. What do you think of uh, our guest this morning, Jeff Tracta, by the way? I, I'm, I was a little, you know, off this morning. We had our firm holiday party, and I'm just <laughs> right on now. It's great. <laughs> He's firing me up. Did you really have the firm holiday party we last did. night? We uh -huh. did. We did. All right. All right. That's interesting. Jill, what do you think? Oh, my gosh. Amazing. Yep. Truly amazing. What a gift that you have. Although... I must say, Thorne, how dare you show up after all these years? Oh, my God. Oh. You were my brother, then my lover, and now you are my betrayer. How could you do that? I used to, well, I used to say Jill, things put like, it out there. Oh, I used to say that I was known for such lines as, Brooke, you know I can't remember shooting my brother in the head. I have amnesia, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, an, it's a very interesting thing. The Bold and the Beautiful is seen in over a hundred different countries, and they dub the show. <laughs> so it's a really odd experience for me to go to one of those places and put a television set on, see my face going, Brook, he le dice again, you better don't repeat. Fast to bring it, we don't want to bring it on the again, yeah. Abnesia. <laughs> I think. No translation for Scott, that word, huh? Scott, what's coming into my mind as I'm watching Jeff is Robin Williams, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I, I've not had this belly laughter over and over uh, and over again. Yeah. And, you know, I'm thinking about it, and it's it, actually, I'm going to say it right now, I, Jeff, your impersonations are in many respects better yeah. than what I've seen from Williams. Well, can I tell you something? If Robin Williams had gotten the therapy that yeah. I got when I was 22 years old, he would be alive today. Yeah. Okay. And the problem is people deal with depression in a variety of ways. And most people, which is our society, has accepted that, yeah, have a drink, and that will, that right. will take it away. And that is the exact opposite of what you should do to make yourself feel good. Because yeah. it's a depressive, and yeah. it's just pulling you down. And unfortunately, he, uh, he didn't get the help. And it's, it's, uh, it's so sad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's talk about your stage show that you're doing. You're doing these famous singers. I've got a list of some of them here. April, are you going to be ready to play a few of these for us? You do everybody from the Black Eyed Peas, uh, Eminem, Frank Sinatra, Billy Joel, Bob Dylan, Smokey Robinson, Lady Antebellum, Chris Isaac. All J three of La Lady Antebellum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. CeeLo Green, Lady Gaga, I mean, Andrea Bocelli, Elton John. You do all of these singing voices yes. on stage. And every stage. background voice as well. And every background yeah, voice, so, so like everything's sort of overdone? like if you hear like oohs and ahs behind me, it's all me. I spent a lot of time creating the uh, I was going to ask, there must have been a lot of resources and time spent in creating just Huge. the multimedia and the recordings of these. Huge amount of time. But the most, the most fun I have ever had doing voices. That's and you're, you're, having, and you're, having a, you're having the time of your life? I'm having the time of my life. Beautiful. Let's hear a couple of these impressions. Let's start with maybe the Black Eyed Peas. April, track number one, I Got a Feeling. And, and, and as we listen to this, Jeff, if you want to kind of comment over. Yeah, this how is this the opening. These are the opening notes. 
This is wasted air time. Yes. You gotta keep talking. I got a feeling that tonight's gonna be a good night. That's you, right? That tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good, good night. A feeling. That tonight's gonna be yeah. a good night. That tonight's That's on the, on the screen right now. You'll see the two of us coming up out of the floor. And four of us show up. And I come out and I'm singing live with myself as all four black guys. That's amazing. And if you have a great lighting hand, it's pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> and and a little fog and a little smoke goes a long way. <laughs> All right, let's listen to uh, Like a Rolling Stone, Bob Dylan, track number seven, Jeff Tracta. This is also a place to hear. <laughs> Once upon a time, you dressed so fine, threw the bums of dime in your prime. Then you? <laughs> then you! <laughs> People call, say, be webbed, doll, you're bound to fall, you fall. Yeah, I, I think you're a little too articulate there for Bob Dylan. Because okay. if you see him perform on stage, yeah. it's all mumble. Well, yeah, especially today. I heard he's going to be doing a new album of Sinatra. Yeah, that's going to be a disaster. <laughs> April! April. We were, just, we were just talking about art and how an upside-down toilet bowl can be considered art. <laughs> and I wouldn't drink that. Cut coffee. Bob Dylan some slack. The man is a poet. <laughs> oh, he's a poat, there's no doubt I'm about it. Scott, can we go to M&M? You want to do M&M, Lose Yourself, number two. I play for our football team. Yeah, I'll do you. Oh, okay. great. Even if you live. Well, that's me doing George Burns. To be a hundred oh, years old. No, let it go, oh, let okay. it go. Oh, okay. It goes very it quickly. It goes very quick. So I start off as George Burns. Look. Oh, you do? Doing Eminem, listen. If you <laughs> had one shot or one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted. One moment. Would you capture it? Or just let it slip? Yo. You better lose yourself in the music the moment you want it. You better never let it go. You only get one I love it. shot. I want to hear Boy George, Do You Really Want to Hurt Me? Number 11. When I first saw Boy George on TV back then, I was a little kind of put off by his appearance, but always a great singer. <laughs> I was. No, I, I, I mean, it, just, it was like seeing Marilyn Manson for the first time. <laughs> no, I'm being totally serious. That's how I felt it. I mean, I didn't know Marilyn Manson. Have you seen Boy George like this? Yeah, I have. He, he Far was different. A, yeah. Marilyn Manson was just in uh, Sons of Anarchy, the last episode. I Actually, when I was a doorman at Morgan's Hotel mm -hmm. in New York when I was struggling, Boy George stayed at the hotel and invited me to his birthday party at the garage. And I went. Yeah. And I also got invited to see Patti LaBelle at Madison Square Garden wow. by Patti LaBelle. Wow. And got a front row seat. What a lifestyle you and, live. Well, I was broke at this point. I, was, <laughs> I needed never the free tickets. <laughs> but I, I was a really good doorman. And as far as I was concerned, <laughs> I was opening doors for my career. Every door I opened. That's beautiful. Andrea Bocelli, track number 18, Time to Say Goodbye. Oh, this beautiful is a really song. long intro. Oh, okay, oh. So can you speed it up? You can speed up. We'll be here for a year. All right. Well, <laughs> and you're doing Sarah Brightman at the same time. Yeah, just fast forward into it. I don't even know if we can use these for television. I don't think we have copy, uh, fast forward. copyright. Yeah. Fast forward. Copyright. For cable television? <laughs> yeah. I think we're okay. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Oh, and that, that would be your end. That's me, Sarah. Brian. That's you. It's too early in the morning. No, it's a beautiful song. I love this song. Let me ask you something. It seems to me that. In order for somebody to do what you do and do it so well, you have to start with the foundation of being a great singer. 
And my guess is, deep down inside, you, you consider yourself a pretty phenomenal singer, yes? Well, no, I don't. You don't? I consider myself, I can carry a tune. Uh -huh. No, I have, I've worked very hard, and when I was in therapy with that doctor mm -hmm. years ago, he said, Jeff, you have a decision to make with your life. You can either lay in the bed and die, or you can recognize that right now the universe is expanding at a rate that your mind and my mind can't comprehend. And if you want, you can join into the expansion and you can make anything happen. There's one trick to doing it. You do it. Mm. So if you want to be an entertainer, I suggest, because I, I, rem I remember what I said to him. I said, well, you know, uh, he wanted me to take acting lessons. And I said, well, you know, my mother always told me I was natural. And he says, well, if your mother was going to have open heart surgery, would she go to a natural surgeon? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he had a good point. Yeah. So I started studying with all of the great acting teachers in New York, mm -hmm. and then I started taking voice lessons from everybody. I've, I've taken more voice lessons from more voice teachers wow. probably than anybody. Hmm. Because when I was, and I was doing Broadway in New York, I was playing Danny Zuko in Tommy Toon's revival of Greece. Mm -hmm. It was really fun. They had Thorn, my character from The Bold and the Beautiful, go on to uh, become a Broadway star. Hmm. And I, I'm singing on Broadway, and I started studying with every great teacher that was there. And I did find that the more I, the more I learned, the more I could do, and, and it never ends. It doesn't end, and you know I don't want to say how many voices I can do because every day I keep working on creating new ones. And so, how many do you do? Well, we say we do a hundred in the show at okay. least. Yeah. So, but is, is it harder for you to be a singer, to be an impersonator, or to be a comedian? Which of the three skills or talents is more difficult for you? I love doing all three of them. It's yeah. very difficult. They come all naturally for you? Yeah, and, and doing one without the other would feel like I... This is the thing. When I was on The Bold and the Beautiful, I told Bill Bell, the creator of the show, Colleen Bell's um, stepdad. Uh, no, yeah. She married his son, so that would make her his... Uh, let's no, no, no <laughs> daughter-in-law. Yeah. Okay, right. yeah. Her, her father-in-law hired me, and I said, I want to sing on your show. And he said, yes, you and every other actor I've ever hired wants to sing on my show. I said, but I really do sing. He said, yes, I know, Jeff, but your character is having a nervous breakdown right now because you're going to, and I thought, oh, I got this one in the bag. Um, you're going to shoot your brother, Ridge, in the head, and then you're going to get amnesia, and I promise you, you will have nothing to sing about. <laughs> so I waited for like a year. And then I sang for him, and a week later I was singing on the show. Wow. Very cool. And then they made my character a singer. Oh. And so then I made albums. Three I made platinum? Three multi-platinum albums internationally with the girl, actually, who you watched on All My Children. Her name is Bobby Eeks. She played Crystal. She was married to Adam, but she was carrying Tad's baby. No. <laughs> Shocking. We need subtitles for you this. You think I'm making oh, this up? I love this stuff. No, Shocking. she... The two of us got together and we started making albums that went triple platinum internationally because of the popularity of The Bold and the Beautiful, and we're playing 10,000-seat arenas in That's Amsterdam, amazing. and I'm on stage singing in front of all of these people, and the only thing that I'm thinking is what that psychologist said to me, you can make anything happen. And it all came from me going, I'd like to sing on your show. <laughs> like one little comment, one little phrase, and... This all happened, and it all comes from within. We can create anything we want. That's a you just have to work your butt off. Yeah. And I did. I worked my butt off, but I had so much fun doing it.